The Ruhr area is one of the largest conurbations in Europe, with the Ruhr River as its lifeline and eponym. The Ruhrverband is responsible for the water management in the Ruhr catchment area with a surface of around 4,500 square kilometers. Its tasks comprise the provision of sufficient water reserves as well as the treatment of wastewater. But how does the small Ruhr manage to supply millions of people with water every day, rain or shine? The river is being supported by the Ruhrverband's reservoirs, located in the rainy low mountain ranges of the Sauerland region, and the Möhne Reservoir is one of them. The Möhne Reservoir surface roughly equals 1,500 soccer fields. An aerial view shows that the lake fits so well into the landscape as if it had developed naturally. It was, however, created by mankind. When the Möhne Lake started to serve its purpose in July 1913, after five years of construction, it represented the largest reservoir in Europe. More than 800 people had been relocated to build it. The rubble dam is 650 meters long, more than 40 meters high and consists of more than 250,000 cubic meters of masonry. It has an impounding capacity of more than 130 million cubic meters of water. It is simply through its weight that the dam withstands the immense water pressure. The dam measures 34 meters in width at its base and more than 6 meters at its crest. But despite these measurements, it has a surprisingly slim and elegant appearance due to its parabolic construction. As part of the Ruhrverband's network of reservoirs, the Möhne Reservoir continues to supply sufficient water to support the drinking water production in the Ruhr Valley until today, even in times of dry weather. Apart from this main purpose, the reservoir also contributes to flood protection, energy generation, recreation and the protection of nature. Around 20 Ruhrverband employees are located at the Möhne Lake, ensuring that the reservoir is always safe to operate and can fulfill its purpose. Several tasks are also handled by the Ruhrverband's headquarters in Essen. For instance, the controlling for the complete reservoir system, as well as water quality monitoring in the laboratory. We apply a sophisticated controlling system to ensure the reservoir stability. We monitor, for instance, the dam's movement and its tightness with different measuring tools that either generate values continuously or at regular intervals. These results are subject to constant monitoring and evaluation. Of course, the Möhne Reservoir has seen repair work and renovation during the meanwhile 100 years of existence. One of the largest construction projects was the installation of an inspection tunnel inside the dam in the early 1970s. It stretches through the dam's full length at its widest section, the base. Measuring instruments for the reservoir monitoring are, for example, stored inside the inspection tunnel and sealing work on the rock or brickwork has also been carried out from inside the tunnel in the past. The dam crest was also renewed almost completely during the 1970s. In the 1990s, the reservoir's bottom outlet units were replaced after 80 years of operation. 
Weathering damage in the rubble brickwork was fixed on the dam's downstream side facing the compensating reservoir. Just like the masonry tower, the dam's downstream side, by the way, was placed under monument protection in 1980. This does not affect the structural components required for the reservoir's operation. They may be adapted to current technological standards at any time. Below the crest, 105 spillways are installed along the entire length of the dam to avoid flooding. When the reservoir exceeds its full supply level, the water spills over the thresholds of these openings, a fascinating sight that, however, can only be observed once in a while when extremely high levels of inflow into the reservoir occur. Like a curtain of spray, the water rushes through the spillways and down the dam into the compensating reservoir. During normal operations, the water is not released via the dam, but through a steel-clad tunnel of 200 meters in length. This tunnel runs from the dam to the power plant. Here, the water produces enough energy for 3,500 households. After turbination, the water is released into the compensating reservoir, usually on the morning of a working day, as this is the time where generated electricity sells best. The water is stored in the compensating reservoir and then steadily released into the Mölle River via another hydropower plant. A maximum of around 32 cubic meters of water per second flows into the compensating reservoir via the power plant's water conduit. In case of longer periods of heavy rains, for instance, more water than the volume that can be processed by the power plant might have to be discharged from the Mölle Lake. When this happens, the bottom outlets in the dam are opened and the water shoots from the conical jet in a spout of up to 20 meters high, just like a giant fountain. During World War II, the people living close to the Möhne Reservoir made the painful experience of how much power impounded water can have. During the night of May 16th and 17th, 1943, British bombers attacked the dam with bouncing bombs that had been developed specifically for this attack. One of the bombs reached its target and blew a gap of almost 80 meters into the dam. In a short amount of time, more than 90 million cubic meters of water were released and the tidal wave up to 7 meters high crashed through the narrow Möhne Valley, sweeping away everything in its path. At least 1,500 lost their lives in this disaster, most of them forced laborers accommodated in a camp below the reservoir. Even in the Ruhr area, more than 80 kilometers away from the Möhne Reservoir, the tidal wave claimed lives and caused major devastation. As the Möhne Reservoir was crucial for supplying the war industry located in the Ruhr area with water, reconstruction of the dam started already five days after the attack. Thousands of people were required to rebuild it, among them many forced laborers and prisoners of war. Nearly four months later, the Möhne Reservoir was back in operation. Until the end of the war, it suffered no more targeted attacks. The final elimination of war damage on the dam was carried out during the 1950s. The destroyed waterworks that had been swept away by the tidal wave were reconstructed at different locations. The Möhne Lake is mainly surrounded by forest. The forest has three main functions. First of all, it protects the soil and the water. Forest soil with a lot of root development has the ability to store large amounts of water and prevents erosion. 
Secondly, the forests serve a recreational purpose. They add value to the landscape and are important recreational spaces, especially in our densely populated region. Thirdly, it also has an economic function, as the trees in the Ruferbans forests are also being used in wood production. Our close to nature management approach makes sure that the forests can serve these three purposes simultaneously. This means that they are managed sustainably, never taking more than can grow back. We also pay attention to the composition of tree species that grow naturally in our region. This leads to forests that blend in our beautiful landscapes and are of high ecological value. By managing our forests with a close-to-nature approach, we are creating ideal conditions for a dense network of ecological niches for animals and plants. We leave some of the old trees in the forest on purpose, so that they may decay and thus offer breeding places for the black woodpecker and several kinds of owls. So-called deadwood in our forests also serves an important purpose. Several types of beetles, maggots and fungi participate in the decomposition of the trunks. Their biology depends on these decomposition processes. Where forests meet water, we plant willow species that can withstand long periods of flooding. In the course of the years, a dense mesh develops in the lake's littoral zone. During the past few years, for instance, many pairs of great crested grebes have successfully bred here at the Mühne Lake. We also see many kingfishers here, finding sufficient food and favorable habitat conditions. In winter, up to 20,000 water birds have a rest on the Mühne Lake. We are proud of the fact that a bird sanctuary of international rank has developed here. Most people, however, primarily associate the Mühne Reservoir with leisure and recreation rather than water supply, energy generation or the protection of nature. It's not for nothing that many who live close to the lake affectionately call it the Westphalian Sea. The Mühne Lake offers everything those in need of relaxation could look for. Its banks provide a lot of room for all kinds of athletic activities. On hot summer days, swimming is of course a big issue. The three public bathing beaches Delike, Körbeke and Wamel offer outstanding water quality. In addition, sailing, surfing, paddling and rowing, as well as driving electric motorboats is permitted on the lake. <coughs> Divers may even explore a former quarry in a designated diving area. This is simply a great spot for sailing. Dams and bridges divide the Mühne Lake into four areas almost equal in size. And thanks to the Harshtrang mountain range running along the northern banks of the lake, the wind conditions are also ideal. We as water sportsmen really enjoy the lake. Those who prefer a more relaxing activity can explore the lake on a cruise with the catamaran MS Mühnesee or the open-air shuttle boat MS Körbeke. The Mühne Reservoir is also a popular spot for events, for instance for the Festival of Bridges or the Mühne Lake Triathlon, open not only for watching but also for active participation. The Mühne Lake thus is and will remain the Ruhr area's top destination for day trips. This is particularly obvious in the cafes or restaurants on a sunny weekend. Many people used to come here with their parents and still visit the lake today, now with their own children. It is certainly an asset that the lake is such a great destination for families. The numerous activities on offer make sure that there is something to do for everybody. Of course, reservoirs look just like lakes, but below the surface the conditions are still different. Due to heavily fluctuating water levels, biotopes required by different species of fish as a spawning ground cannot develop sufficiently. 
Especially predatory fish such as pike, pike perch or brown trout are quite demanding in terms of their choice of habitat. Most of the other species are not as particular. That's why, without human intervention, we would sooner or later see large populations of non-predatory fish feeding mainly on plankton. This in turn would adversely affect the water quality. Thanks to the Ruhrverband's fishery experts, the reservoirs are home to a diverse population of fish despite these difficult conditions. They are managing the fish stock in line with the latest hydroecological findings. The fish that we plant into the Ruhrverband's reservoirs are bred in our fish breeding facility here at the Mühne Lake. In fish breeding, the roe is taken from adult fish, for example pike, and fertilized artificially. The fertilized fish eggs are being incubated in special breeding jars. Our fish breeding facility offers ideal breeding conditions, leading to a situation where much more pike eggs, for instance, reach a state where they are ready to hatch than in natural waters. After around three weeks, the eggs are placed into larger tanks where the small pikes hatch. When they do so, they are about seven millimeters long. When they are planted into the reservoirs after three weeks, they measure around two centimeters. The abundant fish population in the Möhne Lake is not only crucial for its water quality, it is also responsible for the lake's extraordinary reputation as a fishing area, promising major catches. I am currently fishing for perch, but here at the Möhne Lake there is rather a big chance that you might also catch other predatory fish, such as trout or pike. I love to come here, on the one hand because of the wonderful fish stock, but on the other hand also because of the beautiful nature. For me, that's simply a part of fishing. The Mühne Lake, a workplace and a recreational haven at the same time, supplier of energy and habitat for rare animal and plant species. But even after 100 years of history, the lake serves mainly the purpose of being an essential element in the Ruhrverband's reservoir system, safeguarding water supply for millions of people.